Yes, what we've what have I done is you just cast it and let it let it try and get fairly close to the bottom. And as you see your braid go slack, then you can start working it back. Then at least you know it's quite close onto the to the bottom. Yeah, at the moment we're fishing in about oh geez, at the moment we're four four point three, so I'm throwing into about five meters of water there now. Cover up his eyes, just calm him down a little bit. Stick the tag in him. 4.95. The last dairy. Okay, guys, I've just chopped the hooks and I've crushed the uh, the barb on the hook as well. It just helps that when you want to take the hook out of the fish, often when it goes into his very hard jaw, you can't really like get it out. And the first couple of fish I caught, I forgot to actually uh, crush the barb, but now eventually I've like crushed it, so you'll see. The next couple of fish I'll, I'll catch will be a lot easier to take out the uh, hook out of the fish. If you guys can notice, but I mean, this fish is probably only 45, 50 centimeters, and you can actually see how he's putting a 4.2 meter boat around. Okay. Another feisty little baby. Okay. Ah, oh, check here. A recapture. Now, this is one of the fish that I've tagged. Jeez, I just don't have him on my tagging slate. So this fish was tagged probably about two months ago. Because according to my slate, I've got data up to 1926. And uh, yeah, so this 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 fish was taken about two months ago, and here we go. We just recaught him again on the Swatkops River. It just shows you guys how if you look after these fish, we'll keep catching them, and how they'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Just close much, 480. Okay, so there we go. Nice recapture. Tags looking good. We'll let him go. You guys must always take notice of is, is your hairs. Every time you, you have another cast, just make sure that you get all your hairs ni nice and straight because if the lure does do that, it, it does affect on how the lure actually drops. So always make sure that your hair is nice and straight. Further down now, I come to look for skippies. <clears throat> it seems like I've, I've, I've got one on here. There he goes. Woken up. Oh, there he jumps off. <laughs> and the skippies are around, so we'll see if we can get some more here quickly. Okay, come on, skippy. Like I've told you guys in the past, watch out for all the sparks on these guys. And uh, yeah, just what about Cape Gurnets, which live on the bottom? They're almost, you know, it looks very much like a sand shark, but he's obviously not the same like species in that. And uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of them around here, so let's just put him back. And off he goes. Guys, another little Larry. I just hooked him in the side there. Another nice little Larry. 
And yeah, that's it. We basically come to catch these for the day. This was our target species. We managed to get some. Uh, the main lure we used was uh, bucktail leadheads. So yeah, I think that. I think we're going to wrap off the show, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks. Okay, guys, I just want to have a quick discussion about the tackle that we're using today. Show and that. Um, the first outfit I fished was, was, was a little uh, crucial tiger. It's a two-piece rod. Um, it's a medium, it's a medium heavy outfit and with a 4,000 sustained FG. Uh, this is probably what I'd like to call my heavy outfit for the the S3 fishing and that. Um, I've spooled it with 15 pound braid. So yeah, if those if those bigger skippies are around and the and the bigger larrys and that, then I I would prefer to use this outfit. And then. For my lighter outfit, I've got a uh, crucial worming and jigging rod, a, a 7 foot 2, with a sustained 2500 FG, and this is pulled with a 10 pound braid. So yeah, when those younger garrick and that are around, then I enjoy using this outfit because it's not as stiff as what the other outfit is, and it's just a lot more fun to catch the uh, fish on.